Good afternoon. We'd like to thank you all for attending this session and thank you for welcoming us to the Aspen Ideas Festival. It's not every day that teenagers like us get to present in front of world-renowned experts. We are the students from the Westchester and Ridge Sciences Magnets, a high school in the Los Angeles Unified School District, and we're honored to present to you a project that we call Cultivate. My name is Nick. I'm Isaiah. I'm Mia. I'm Arielle. I'm Chelsea. I'm Jasmine. I'm Jordan. And I'm Ralston. The goal of Cultivate is to counteract the urban food crisis in America. We decided to fight obesity and hunger by increasing access to organic, locally grown, sustainable food. To do this, we had to cultivate minds, cultivate hearts, and especially cultivate kale. <laughs> Most of the students in our school live in inner city neighborhoods, so we experience the urban food crisis on a daily basis. We also understand that our student body is 89% African American and Latino, and that these demographics suffer disproportionately from obesity and are more than twice as likely as other demographics to die from diabetes. Although obesity is a global problem, for many of us, it is a personal problem impacting much more than health. For over 10 years, I have been fighting against obesity. It has impacted my self-esteem and taken away my sense of optimism. As an overweight teenager, unhealthy food has literally jeopardized my life. So clearly, we have a problem. Urban communities lack information about and access to healthy, affordable food. Students and their families are forced to buy whatever food is readily available and for a low price. And unfortunately, those foods tend to be limited to greasy fast food. We want to help see young people go from eating this to this. A couple years ago, our school district took some aggressive steps to address this issue. They outlawed junk food in the vending machines and reworked the cafeteria menu, replacing popular food items such as pepperoni pizza with health healthier options such as chickpea stew. Needless to say, this didn't go over so well. <laughs> Students across Los Angeles responded to these new policies the way teenagers usually respond to rules, by bending them, breaking them, and circumventing them. LAUSD soon developed thriving junk food black markets. And while some schools have problems with drugs being sold on campus, well, at our school, our dealers sell chips, candy, even burgers and burritos right out of their backpacks. <laughs> but no one should have been surprised by this. You see, our economy is structured to put kids like us to work in these fast food restaurants. We eat what we produce. Instead of being discouraged, we, re we realized that these burrito dealers we're taking some initiative in food distribution. As Cultivate, we're able to find a solution that restructures our local economy. It takes advantage of the industriousness of our peers and puts them to work, making our community healthier. We've all heard the axiom, if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. It was this idea that gave us our solution. Let's not just distribute healthy foods to the community, but let's grow healthy food in the community with the work provided by the community. As students from a science-themed magnet high school, it's always our goal to solve problems using the scientific method. Our scientific approach led us to information about aquaponic farming, a newly developed agricultural technique that takes sustainability to a whole new level. Aquaponic farming usually takes place in a specially designed greenhouse like this one. The greenhouse contains fish tanks that house edible fish, such as tilapia and catfish. The fish produce waste, which is pumped along with water from the tanks through pipes to the rest of the greenhouse. The water irrigates the fruits and vegetables, and the waste from the fish fertilizes the plants, providing all the nutrients needed to sustain the growth of the produce. The roots of the plants then filter the water, cleaning it before it's returned back to the fish tanks. This system produces a perfect life cycle. Nothing is wasted. Nothing's polluted. All you get is fresh, organic, sustainable food. We realized that aquaponic farming was the perfect way to put teenagers to work producing the foods we want them to eat. So we decided to build an aquaponic greenhouse and farmer's market in a vacant area on our high school campus. It was a huge undertaking, but we didn't have to do it alone. Our administrators helped us apply for grants, some community members helped with the designs, our auto shop teacher and wood shop teacher led the construction, and we had the help of over 100 students to get the greenhouse built. And I got to use power tools. And we all lived to tell the story. The greenhouse quickly became a centerpiece of our school. 
giving the entire student body a sense of what could be accomplished through hard work and determination. Ron Finley, a self-proclaimed gangsta gardener who pioneered urban farming in South Los Angeles, once claimed that if kids grow kale, then kids will eat kale. We found that he was absolutely right. The students who were involved with the building and the construction of our greenhouse began to come to us and ask us questions about the fruits and the vegetables that we were planning to grow. So we harnessed their curiosity at a healthy foods festival held on our school campus at lunch. It was so incredible to see our peers trying new and healthy food. All in all, the system cost our school about $11,000 in materials, most of which is funded through grants and partnerships. Although $11,000 does sound like a lot of money in this era of underfunded schools and constant budget cuts, just think of the long-term value. Over the life of the greenhouse, we will be able to cultivate hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of fish and vegetables and there's no way to quantify the instructional value. How much geometry can a student learn when building the, and constructing the greenhouse? How much physics will they learn when calculating and adjusting the flow of the water system? And how much biology will they learn while sustaining the life in the greenhouse? And how can you quantify the health of our students? All of this for $1,000? That's less than a school might spend on a decent photocopy machine. So we ask you, should schools spend money on a machine to print mindless worksheets? <laughs> or on a greenhouse that creates authentic and engaging learning experiences? The best part about this project is that this greenhouse is just the beginning. And after our success with the Aspen Challenge, Cultivate has really started to catch on in the Los, Ange in the Los Angeles area. And with that, this, our Neighborhood Council funded the construction of an amphitheater-style seating area next to our greenhouse, where we can plant and host <sighs> classes and workshops related to aquaponic farming and healthy foods. And that sparked the interest of the Los Angeles City Council, which adopted a resolution advocating for our greenhouse and advocating for the development of aquaponic farms throughout the city of Los Angeles. Who would have thought that the eight of us would have... <laughs> Who would have thought that the eight of us could help shape policy decisions in one of the largest cities in the world? Next year, our aquaponic farm will be a central component to the academic curriculum at our school. The students in the environmental science classes will do the ongoing work of planting and harvesting. The students in the culinary arts class in the culinary arts classes will use the fish, vegetables, and fruits from the farm to create delicious recipes. The business and entrepreneurship classes, we develop and implement a business plan for the farm. They'll manage the finances for the farmer's market to ensure food distribution to the community. In the coming months, we plan to document our work on a website, establishing a template that can be replicated anywhere. For updates, you can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. If we can do this in Westchester, why not the rest of LA? Why not put an urban farm on every high school campus in our district? With a budget of about a million dollars, we can bring healthy, organic, sustainable food to every community in Los Angeles. And if we can do it in Los Angeles with your help, why, why not, not the, the world? world? closing, we'd like to express our sincerest gratitude to the Basils Family Foundation and the Aspen Institute for making this life-changing experience possible. By giving us this opportunity, you not only empowered us to change our community, but individual people's lives. Through this process, I have begun to eat healthier foods, work out more often, and improve my own health. I have gained a new sense of empowerment and self-esteem knowing that my teammates and I have been able to transform not only our community and school, but we have also been transforming ourselves. And finally, we'd like to thank all of you in the audience and at this Aspen Ideas Festival for all you do to make the world a better place for our generation. We'd like to thank you for welcoming us to this event and into your global dialogue, and we look forward to cultivating new solutions with you in the future. Thank you.